Hello and welcome to the next part of our Tales of Truth series all about David Livingston. And as well as hearing about David Livingston, we're going to learn about some brilliant African animals and some brilliant African children all from the country of Zambia. And David Livingston had to trust in God. In other words, he had to have a special type of belief in God. I don't know if you've ever been to the swimming baths and either your swimming instructor or your mum or your dad has said to you, stood you on the edge of the swimming pool, maybe even in the big pool, and said, right, jump in, I'll catch you. And you just do it. You trust in that adult to actually catch you and to save you from drowning. That's the type of belief that David Livingston had in God. He trusted in God. And our first song video is all about trusting in God. It's called, I'm Trusting You, God. So sit back, get comfortable. If you're in school, well, we can't sing out loud during the pandemic. But if you're at home, join in with the singing. If you're in school, join in with the actions. If you're at home, uh, if you're learning online at home, join in with the singing and the actions.
let's read some verses from the Bible. The first one, in fact the first three, are all found in the book of Acts, which is in the New Testament part of our Bible. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then the book of Acts. It's the fifth book of the New Testament. The book of Acts, chapter 26, and they're found between verses 15 and 18. As usual, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to see how many lines you can read yourself. Then after that, we can read it together. So here we go, 10 seconds, go. So after three, we're going to read it together. If you're at home, then you can read it with me out loud. If you're in class, then during the pandemic, maybe you can only just whisper it with me. Or just make your lips move as if you're reading, but you read silently. So let's try it together. Three, two, one. The Lord said, I am Jesus. Stand up. I have chosen you to be my servant and my witness. You will tell people the things that you have seen and the things that I will show you. This is why I have come to you today. Let's try our second one. 10 seconds starting from now. Wow, these verses are actually quite long. I'm wondering how many you, you lines you managed to read. Was it one, two, three, maybe even the whole lot? Let's try it. Three, two, one. I will keep you safe from your own people and also from the others. I am sending you to them to open their eyes so that they may turn away from darkness to the light and turn to God. Our third verse, sh slightly shorter, 10 seconds, go. Reading it with me this time, three, two, one. Then their sins can be forgiven and they can have a place with those people who have been made holy by believing in me. I don't know if you've noticed in these verses in the little right hand corner of each of them, there's been a, a little hoopo bird or hooper. And remember his saying, when life is scary, God is good. He bases that on a Bible verse. And here it is. It's in the book of Psalms, which is the Old Testament part of our Bible. Chapter 23, verse 4. See if you can read these two lines. Go. Here we go, three, two, one. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. The next African animal that we're going to learn about is Hooper, the little Hoopo bird. And you may have noticed that the theme of our lesson today is when life is scary, God is good. And you know, some people are even afraid, afraid and scared of tiny little birds. <sighs> but you know, when we're afraid of something and when we're scared is a time when we can pray and we can ask God for his courage and his help and to make us brave to be able to deal with that scary thing. Because when life is scary, God is good. I'll day at Roar VBS. I am. That's who. 
<laughs> no, I'm not an owl. I'm Hooper, a Hoopo bird. There are different kinds of Hoopos all over the world. But we African Hoopos are, yeah, you guessed it, in Southern and Central Africa. If you're looking for me, don't look in an ordinary old bird nest. We build our homes inside trees. And if we can't find an empty tree, the walls of a house or a nook in a cliff wall will do just fine. You might think my beak is a little sharp and scary. But don't worry, unless you're a bug or a worm. My beak lets me poke around in leaves, or even under the ground, to find a snack. Once I find a worm or a bug, I smack it on the ground to knock off any parts I don't want to eat, then toss it up and catch it. Do you like to have fun with your food like I do? I'm not sure how you got your name, but I got my name because of the sound I make. Listen. Pretty cool, huh? Usually I keep my fantastic feathers pressed down flat. But sometimes when I want to show off or get some attention, I look like this. Talk about wild. I've been watching you humans, and sometimes things make your hair stand on end. I think it's because you're afraid, right? Like when you have a bad dream or hear scary news? Sometimes things are kind of scary, and you might worry that you're facing that scary time all alone. But God is good. He's always there for you. The Bible says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. God is good all the time, even when we're afraid. God is right beside you through every problem. When life is scary, God is good. Now for the next exciting part of our Tales of Truth series on the life of David Livingston. Here's the story so far. David, we learned, was born in the little town of Blantyre in Scotland and he, at 10 years of age, his family was so poor that David was sent to work in the local cotton mill. After work finished at uh, 8 o'clock at night, that was when school started, 8 o'clock at night to 10 o'clock and even after school finished, David would often stay up to midnight studying. But the things that he learned in his young little life stood him in good and he went on to university and qualified as a doctor. But David's real passion wasn't to be a doctor, it was to be a missionary. That means someone who goes to a foreign country to tell the people there about the Lord Jesus and about the Bible. And David knew that it was God's will for him to go to the great continent and the many countries of Africa. So how will David get to Africa? How long will it take? Will he be eaten by lions? Let's find out in David Livingston, part two. After travelling back to London, David collected supplies and headed for the coast. There were no aeroplanes at that time. They hadn't been invented yet. The only way of getting to Africa was by boarding a ship and sailing for Cape Town at the very foot of Africa. If we were to fly from London to Africa today, it would probably take about 11 and a half hours, maybe slightly more. But by boat, it was going to take David not four days, not four weeks, but four months to travel to Cape Town at the very foot of Africa. But off he went, on the boat, and most passengers became very bored on such a long trip, but not David. He studied his Bible, he read even more books, and he loved it. Sailing ships were often becalmed for days, waiting for wind to fill their sails. And during this time, David persuaded the captain of the ship to show him how to use a quadrant, this strange looking object that you see in the picture right here. This object helped the sailors find their exact position. 
And David Livingston purchased a quadrant of his own. And that's how he was able to make accurate maps of his travels later on as a result of learning how to use a quadrant on the voyage to Africa. In March 1841, David Livingston finally reached the continent of Africa. On arriving in Cape Town, his plan was to travel to the most northerly mission station where his friend Dr Moffat was in charge. The village was called Kuruman. He purchased supplies, mainly equipment, guns and ammunition. He sailed further around the coast to Algoa Bay and set off with hired guides and a wagon, not pulled by horses, but pulled by big African oxen. They travelled 700 miles around the edge of the desert, partly on foot, partly in the wagon, and camping out under the stars at night time. It was a difficult trip, but on the 31st of July 1841, so another four months, so now we're talking he's been travelling for eight months to get from Blantyre to the end of his journey where Mr Moffat is, they safely arrived at Kuruman, and there David began learning the local language. An older missionary called Mr Edwards said to David, David, the first thing you need to do if you want to share the gospel with the people of this, this great continent is you need to learn the local language, otherwise they won't be able to understand what you're saying. So Mr Edwards began to teach him. And it wasn't easy. Learning your language is not easy. But David Livingston thought about the fact that learning Latin isn't easy and he managed to do that and becoming a doctor wasn't easy but he'd managed to do that and travelling all the way from Blantyre to Kuruman in Africa wasn't easy but with God's help he'd managed to do that so using his growth mindset he knew that if he kept trying, he would learn from whatever mistakes he made and he would be able to learn the local language and that's what he did. During his first year in Africa, David Livingston set off on many dangerous missions to search out a suitable place to build a new mission station. He moved among savage tribes who were notorious for raiding white settlements south of their villages, killing not only men, but also women and children. He travelled hundreds of miles on foot that year through unexplored country. He overheard his fellow travellers, whom he called his African companions, say that he was thin and not strong, and that he only wore trousers to make him look as if he had muscles. David, you see, was quite small and later said that hearing the African companions make fun of him, oh, it made his Scottish blood boil. So with his men, he marched at top speeds for days and end until he overheard them say, he is still thin, he is still small, but he is strong. David made a special visit to a tribe known to be particularly unfriendly. They had poisoned the previous white visitor and the two men he had brought with him. When David arrived, though, though, everyone except the chief and his two bodyguards fled from the village. David felt fear in the chief's eyes as they talked, so he accepted food from him when he was offered it. Thankfully, it was not poisoned. God had kept David safe. And when David then lay down to sleep, the chief witnessed how trusting David Livingston was, and the chief and David quickly became friends. In June 1843, David was given permission from the London Missionary Society to build a new mission station in the northern villages. He chose a beautiful place called Mabotsa. It's about 200 miles north of Kuruman. It was surrounded by unfriendly villages who offered no help in building the mission station. However, a particular district was being raided daily by lions, and the terrified villagers approached David for help, 
and they asked him to shoot the great lion, which was the leader of the troop. So, along with his friend Mibalwe, David approached a low-lying land outside the village, where the lion was surrounded by tribesmen. Mibalwe shot first and missed, and the lion broke free through the ring of villagers. David carefully took aim at his rifle as the lion was running towards him, and his aim was true and accurate. And David fired his gun. Bang! And the lion fell to the ground. And the people shouted, Hurrah! He shot! He shot! But David feared that the lion was not dead. It was only injured. And David began to quickly uh, reload his gun. But out of nowhere, the lion sprang up again and pounced through the air, grabbing David's left arm and its powerful jaws. It wrestled him to the ground, just like a terrier dog shaking a rat in its mouth. Mabalwe took aim again, but his gun misfired, and the lion left David Livingston and to attack Mabalwe, biting his thigh before wounding another man. But David's shot had done enough damage. Eventually, the mighty lion dropped dead amongst the three injured men. Thankfully, David was a doctor. He was able to patch up his two injured comrades. But the damage to his own arm was significant. It was slashed, it was splintered, it was badly broken. There was no doctor for David Livingston. He would have to mend his own arm as best as he could. He would never be able to lift his left arm higher than his shoulder. He would never be able to fire his gun except from waist height. Just as well he was right handed. We read from the Bible that the Lord said, I am Jesus. Stand up. I have chosen you to be my servant and my witness. You will tell people the things that you have seen and the things that I will show you. This is why I have come to you today. David Livingston knew that he had been sent by the Lord Jesus Christ to tell people all about him and how Jesus had died on a cross for them at Calvary. So David stood up even after the lion had bitten him and knew that he must go on and he must try and tell people about the Lord Jesus. You read in the Bible, I will keep you safe from your own people and also from others. I am sending you to them. The Lord Jesus had kept David safe. Even from a dangerous lion, he was not dead. So that David could tell people in Africa why Jesus died to save them. We read in the Bible, it's to open their eyes so that they may turn away from darkness to light and turn to God. Then their sins can be forgiven and they can have a place with those people who have been made holy by believing in me. David Livingston went all the way to Africa so people there could learn that God had sent Jesus to take their punishment by dying on the cross so that God could then forgive their sins. But did you know that God can, can and will forgive your sins? And all you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and ask God to forgive you. But will David Livingston survive? Will he have to go home to Scotland? Will David ever find a wife? Find out next time in our next Now we're going to hear the story of a boy called Honest from the country of Zambia. And you'll see Zambia is right there. And it's uh, not at the very north of Africa or at the very south of Africa. It's almost in the middle of Africa, maybe just a little south of the middle. And it looks tiny on our little map, but it's about three times the size of the UK. It's a big country. So let's hear what Honest has to say. Let's visit a 10-year-old boy named Honest. <laughs> he 
Mickey and his family live in the southern region of Zambia, in a tiny village called Kalima. His parents are farmers who grow corn, soybeans, and other vegetables. They also raise cows, goats, and chickens. During the week, Honest Day begins early. Before he goes to school, he has to help take care of the farm animals. One of his favorite things to do is milk the cows with his brother. Like most kids his age, Honest loves to laugh and have fun with his friends at school. But he doesn't take a school bus each morning. Honest has to hike down the mountainside, and it can take him over an hour just to get to school each day. Even though he has such a long walk to and from school, Honest loves it and he hopes to become a teacher someday. After school, his work continues. Honest helps his mom prepare dinner by collecting firewood to cook the food. He yokes two of their cows together so that they can drag heavy logs to be cut up. A yoke is a piece of wood that's fastened over the necks of two cows and is attached to the plow or cart they pull. In this case, they're pulling logs. Once the cows drag the log back to the cooking area, Honest must chop it up for his mom to use in the fire. On some nights, he goes hunting with his father. They hunt wild animals to provide food for the family and to sell in the nearby village. Honest and his father use a wooden spear to hunt for wild warthogs, and it can be very dangerous. They go out at night, and sometimes Honest gets scared. When he's scared, Honest remembers that in the Bible, Book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 4, it says, Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Wow! Isn't it great to know that even in the scary times, God is close beside us? Sometimes we have to do things that are a little scary, but when you do, just remember, when life is scary, God is good. Time for our brilliant stand up, sit down quiz. The aim of this quiz is to still be standing after 10 questions. And how we do it is we all stand up. So let's stand up. And I ask the question, and you either put your left hand up or your right hand up. And if you get the correct answer, you keep standing. And if you get it wrong, you have a seat, but you can still keep playing the game. Just don't stand back up again. But put your left hand up, your right hand up, see if you get the questions right. Then after 10 questions, we might have a couple of bonus questions and everybody's back in. Also, if there's a question, maybe question three, question four, something like that, and everyone gets it wrong, then for the next question, instead of everyone sitting back down, everyone can stand back up again. So let's try question one. Who is the main man in our story? Is it A, left hand up, David Livingston, or B, right hand up, David London? Five seconds to decide, starting from, and when the five seconds are up, if our hands have got up, that's the answer we need to take. Go. Of course, it's David Livingston. Two, where was David Livingston travelling to? Was he travelling to Cape Town in Africa 
or Beijing in China. Five seconds. It was Cape Town in Africa. Question three. How long would it take to get to Cape Town back in those days? Was it A, left hand up, four hours, B, right hand up, four months, five seconds, go. Final answer. It was four months, four months just to get to Cape Town. Four. What mode of transport did David use to travel to Cape Town? Did he A use a plane or B a ship? Go! Final answer. It was a ship. It had to be a ship. Planes hadn't been invented back in those days. Five. What special piece of equipment did the ship's captain show David how to use to navigate accurately. Was it A, a quadrant, or B, a telescope? Tricky. And the answer is a quadrant. Remember the strange looking brass object that we've seen? I wonder how many people are still standing. What animals did David use to pull his wagon from Cape Town to Kuraman? Was it A, horses, or B, oxen? Three, two, one. It was oxen. Seven. What special skill did David have to learn to be able to share the gospel with the African people? A. He had to learn their language, or B, he had to be able to cook their food. Five seconds, go. David used his growth mindset to learn their language. Eight, David arrived at a village where they had poisoned the last white visitor. So what did he do? A. Be rude and refuse the food that they offered. Or B. David was brave and ate the food they offered. Five seconds. Go. David was brave and he ate the food that they offered and trusted that even though it was scary, God would be close to him and keep him safe. 9. Did David manage to shoot the savage lion that was attacking the villagers? A. Yes. B. No. Simple. Go. Yes, he did manage to shoot the lion. But what part of David's body did the lion manage to bite? Did it sink its teeth into A, David's left arm, or B, David's right leg? Three, two, one. It was David's left arm. If you're still standing after 10 questions, well done. You can give yourself a little pat on the back or a big thumbs up or a little victory cheer or even a happy dance because you are a winner and you deserve a trophy. But whether you're still standing after 10 questions or whether you got a question or two wrong, stand back up because this is the bonus question. In the video, I am trusting you, God. What African animal appears first in this video? Is it A, a panda, or B, a lion? Five seconds to decide. 
Final answer. It's a line. Of course it's a line. Because pandas are only from China. And lions only in Africa. Here is our super bonus question. So even if you get the last question wrong, stand back up again for our last super bonus question. Remember Hoopo, Hooper the Hoopo bird? And he always said when life is scary, A, God is good, or B, God is even scarier. Five seconds, go. Hooper the Hoopo bird says when life is scary, God is because there's someone even more important than a lion and that's Jesus and this is what this little song is all about Brianna and Carissa are going to be singing and doing the actions see if you can keep up with them they are brilliant at this and um, if you're in school then unfortunately during the pandemic we can't be doing any uh, singing but you can do the actions and join in and if you're at home join in with the singing as well so let's hear who is the king of the jungle. So thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.